All right, this is module three, homework one, radical and radical functions. We're going to start with the nth root of a. So we call this the nth root of a. So n tells you what root, whether it's a square root, cubed root, fourth root, whatever. So this is what's called your index. Your a is what you're taking the root of. So that's called your radicand. And then that funny uh, check mark looking symbol is your radical symbol. So for example, if you have the square root of nine, even though there's no index written there, it's understood that it's gonna be a two. So if there's anything other than the square root, so like this next example has a three there, that'll be the cubed root. But because there's nothing written, it's understood that it's a square root. Just like if you have x, it's understood that it's 1x, same concept. So that little 2 is telling me we're taking out 2 of a kind. So if I break down 3, going back to prime factorization, I want to break down 9 in any way that I can. So I know 9 is 3 times 3. So 3 cannot be factored down any further. It's prime. So it's going to be circled, and it's going to be circled. So underneath the square root, we have 3 times 3. Again, because it's a square root, we're looking for 2 of a kind. So these two 3's are coming out of the radical. Nothing's left underneath the radical, so our answer is just 3. Only one 3 comes out. Another way to think about this is we have the square root of 3 twice. So 3 times 3, which is 3 squared. So the square root and square are opposite functions, just like adding and subtracting are opposite functions that cancel each other out. Multiplying and dividing are opposite functions that cancel each other out. Squared and square root are opposite functions that cancel each other out, and we're just left with that three. Same thing for the next example. If we have the cubed root of 343, so that's telling me we're looking for three of a kind. So breaking up 343, we have 49 times seven, 49 can be broken down into 7 times 7. 7 cannot be broken down any further. It's prime. So that means I can't break down 7 times 1 is the only way I could get 7, but I still have that 7 there. So I can't break down 7 any further. It's prime. It gets circled. So underneath the cubed root, we really have 7 times 7 times 7 because 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. That cubed root tells me I'm taking out three of a kind, groups of three. So those three sevens are coming out of the radical, just as seven. Everything came out of the radical, nothing's left underneath. So that's my final answer. The radical will go away. Same thing with the next one. I have to simplify the square root of negative four. So I can break up negative four. This is our special case. I can break it up into negative one times positive four. Negative 1, again, is our special case. It can't be broken down any further, so it's going to get circled. 4, we know, is 2 times 2. 2 is prime. It cannot be broken up any further, so it will also get circled. So underneath the radical, negative 4, we're going to rewrite as negative 1 times 2 times 2. There's no index here, so it's understood to be the square root. It's understood that we're looking for 2 of a kind. So these two twos are coming out of the radical. And then we have the square root of negative 1. This is our special case. The square root of negative 1 is i. This is our only special case. I'm sorry, not i squared. i is the square root of negative 1. i is the square root of negative 1. So, outside of the radical came the 2 and came the i, which is 2i. Nothing's left underneath the radical, so that's done. Same thing over here. This time this negative is out front of the radical being multiplied. Underneath the radical we have 4, which is 2 times 2. 2 can't be broken up any further, so it's going to get circled. So out front we have that negative 1. It's already out front, so just hanging out front. It's the square root, so we're looking for 2 of a kind. 
Those two twos are coming out of the radical. Nothing's left underneath the radical, so the radical's going to go away. So we're left over with negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. So these two problems are side by side because they look very similar but have very different answers. So be careful about those. Next, we have the cube root of negative 64, just like the previous problem. Now we're looking for three of a kind because it's a cube root. Negative 64, we can break down into negative 1 times 64. 64 we know is 4 times 16, and you could do um, 8 times 8, you can do whatever, uh, 2 times 32, either way you're going to get the same answer in the end. So breaking down 4, 2 times 2, 2 is done so it gets circled, um, 16 is 2 times 8, again you can do 4 times 4, you'll get the same answer in the end. 8 is 2 times 4, 2 is done so it gets circled, 4 is 2 times 2. So I broke down 64 until I can't break it down anymore. So this time, we are doing 3 of a kind. So I need 3 of a kind in order to come out of the radical. So before I had negative 1. I had negative 1. So because it's 3 of a kind, I could say negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Because it's odd, because there's three of them, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 gives me that three of a kind that I'm looking for, and it's still negative 1. So that means underneath the radical, underneath that cubed root, we have negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. We have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So because we're looking for three of a kind, these three negative ones are coming out of the radical. These three twos are coming out of the radical. And those three twos are coming out of the radical. Nothing's left underneath the radical, so the radical is going to go away. We're left with negative one times two times two, which will give us that negative four we're looking for. Same thing with the next one. This negative is already out front, same thing as negative one. So it's going to stay out front. We have the cube root of 64. We just broke down 64 over here. We said it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Again, this negative one is just hanging out out front. Don't forget to keep on bringing it down. We're looking for three of a kind. So these three twos are coming out of the radical. These three twos are coming out of the radical. Nothing's left underneath the radical, so the radical is going to go away. We're left with negative 1 times 2 times 2, which is negative 4. So this time, we have two similar looking problems, but are very different. But we get the same answer in the end, coincidentally. So this whole breaking, it, breaking down the negative 1 will only work when it's the cubed root. Or when it's an odd root, if it's the fifth root, if it's the seventh root. This um, I will only work for the square root of negative 1. Only, only case, only scenario. So next page. So if we have the square root of 4 over 25. So just like we did earlier, we can break this down. Because the square root of 4 over 25, I can use what's called the quotient rule. And I can split it up and say, okay, the square root of 4 over the square root of 25. That way, if we were to break down 4, I know 4 is 2 times 2 over the square root of 25 is 5 times 5. So because the square root, we're looking for 2 of a kind. These two 2's are coming out of the radical. Nothing's left underneath the radical, so the radical's going to go away. Same thing on the bottom. These two 5's are coming out of the radical. Nothing's left underneath the radical, so the radical is going to go away. We're left with 2 over 5, which cannot be simplified. So this is our final answer. Same thing for the next one. This time I had that negative out front. Cubed roots, we're looking for 3 of a kind of 343. On the previous page, we already broke down 343. Before we do that, it's the cubed root of 1 over 343. So again, using the quotient rule, I can break it up 
and say the cubed root of 1 over the cubed root of 343. So the cubed root of 1, I'm breaking down 1, I can say 1 times 1 times 1 is still 1, and it'll give us those three of a kind that we're looking for. So that means that one's coming out of the radical, nothing's left underneath. Same thing, we broke down 343 on the previous page and said it was 7 times 7 times 7. Again, that gives us that three of a kind we're looking for. So don't forget that negative one's hanging out front times we have one up top, seven on the bottom. There's nothing left underneath the radical, so the radical's going to go away. Negative one times one-seventh will be negative one over seven. Final answer, that cannot be simplified, so we're done. Next example, we have the square root. There's no index here, so it's understood to be a two. The square root of x to the tenth. So breaking down x to the tenth power, I could rewrite this as a square root of x times x times x. until we have 10 x's. <clears throat> now, like we said before, we're taking out groups of two, two of a kind. So these two x's are coming out. These two x's are coming out. These two are coming out. These two are coming out. And these two are coming out. Nothing's left underneath the radical. Everything came out in a pair, so the radical is going to go away. We're left with x times x times x times x times x which is five X's, so we can write more concisely as X to the fifth. So if you notice, we have a little shortcut. If we have 10 X's and we're taking out groups of two, that is what division is. So another shortcut would be, okay, I have 10 X's and I'm finding how many groups of two. So I'm dividing that by two, which would give us that X to the fifth that we're looking for. So either way we do it, same thing. Continuing to the next problem, if we have the square root of 25, x to the sixth, I can break down 25 into 5 times 5. 5 is prime, it cannot be broken down any further, so it gets circled. So I have the square root of 5 times 5 times x times x times x times x times x times x. Times x. Again, it's a square root, so we're taking out two of a kind. So these two fives are coming out of the radical. Those two x's are coming out. These two x's are coming out. And these two x's are coming out. So we're left over with five times x times x times x, which is x cubed. Nothing's left underneath the radical, so the radical's gonna go away. So this is our final answer. Our other option, like we just did earlier, the square root of 25, we know is five. If we have six x's, we're taking out groups of two. That'll be 6 divided by 2 to see how many groups are coming out. And that will give us that 5x cubed that we got on the previous section. Either way, same thing. Last one for this page. We have the cubed roots. We're taking out 3 of a kind. Negative 27x to the 21st power. So to start off, I can break down negative 27 into negative 1 times positive 27. Because it's an odd root, because it's a cubed root, just like we did on the previous page, I can break down that negative 1 into negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. That will give us that 3 of a kind that we're looking for, and it's still negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 equals negative 1. Same thing over here with that 27. We can break it down into 3 times 9. 3 is prime, meaning it cannot be broken up any further, so it gets circled. 9 is 3 times 3. Again, three gets circled. So dealing with the uh, x's in a second, we have the cubed root of negative one times negative one times negative one times three times three times three. So we have x to the 21st power. If you want to write out 21 x's and then circle three of a kind, go for it. But I'm gonna use my shortcut on this one um, instead of writing out 21 x's. So we're taking out groups of three. So it's a cubed root. So these three negative ones are coming out of the radical. These three threes are coming out of the radical. 
We know if we're taking out groups of three, if we have 21 X's, we have X to the 21st divided by three, and that will tell us how many groups of three are coming out. So negative one times three is negative three. X to 21 divided by three will tell us seven. So if we had 21 X's written out or taking out groups of three, that means seven groups are coming out. Boom, final answer. So, next page. Last page for this section. So I have the square root of 36, x to the 8th, b to the 26th. Let's break down 36. We can have 3 times 12. 3 is done so it gets circled. 12 is 2 times 6. 2 is done so it gets circled. And 6 is 2 times 3. And then we're going to use our little division shortcut to help us with those variables. Notice that there's no index written, so it's understood to be a 2. So underneath that square root, underneath the radical, we have 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 will give us that 36 that we started with times a to the 8th beats the 26th power. We're looking for two of a kind, so these two 2's are coming out of the radical. These two 3's are coming out of the radical. If we have 8 a's and we're taking out groups of 2, that means we're taking out 8 divided by 2 groups. Oops. Same concept, if we have b to the 26th power, we're taking out groups of 2. That'll give us out 26 divided by 2 groups. So 2 times 3 is 6. a, 8 divided by 2 will give us 4 groups coming out. b to the 26th divided by 2 will give us 13 groups coming out. Everything came out of the radical, nothing's left underneath. So that's our final answer. Next example. We have the fifth root. So now we're taking out groups of five. Negative 243, a to the 15th, y to the 12th, z cubed. So let's start off by separating and doing, breaking down that negative 243. So we can say negative 1 times 243. Because we're taking out group of 5, 5 is odd, so I can say negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. That'll give me those 5 negative 1's I'm looking for, and it's still negative 1. Breaking down 243, um, we know it's 3 and 81. 3 is done so it gets circled. 81 is 3 times 27. 3 is done so it gets circled. 27 is 3 and 9. Again, 3 gets circled. 9 is 3 and 3. So underneath that fifth root, we have 5 negative 1s, 5 3s, 15 x's, so that way I know 15 x's, we're taking out groups of 5. So that means 3 groups are coming out. If we have 12 y's, if we do y to the 12 divided by 5, so 12 divided by 5, my calculator will give me 2.4. That means 2 groups and then some are left over. Two groups and some are left over. So I know two groups are coming out. And if we have the fifth root, if two are coming out, so that means two groups of five. So two times five will give us 10 y's are coming out. Because there's 12, that means two are left over. So two are going to be left over underneath the radical. So another way to think about this, if you don't like it that way. If we have 12 y's, nine, 10, 11, 12 y's. We're taking out groups of five. So one, two, three, four, five. These are coming out. Oops, forgot one. One, two, three, four, five. These are coming out. So those are the two groups that are coming out. And that means two are left over that are not in a group, so they have to stay underneath the radical. So if you want to write it all out, or if you want to do it the division way, either way, you're good to go. Lastly, we have z cubed. 
So that means there's three Zs. There's not enough to make a group of five. So that means no groups of Zs are coming out. So they have to stay underneath the radical. So going back, these five negative ones are coming out. These five threes are coming out. We already said that three groups of Xs are coming out. Two groups of Y are coming out. And then that's left underneath the radical. So writing it all together, we have negative one times three, which is negative three. X cubed, Y squared is coming out of the radical. Left over underneath the radical, we have two Y, so Y squared, Z cubed. So because we still have stuff that stayed underneath the radical that couldn't come out in a group of five, they stayed underneath the radical. Last two for this section, we have to simplify. The square root of X to the sixth, four Y squared. Just like we did on the previous page, we can use a quotient rule to split this up and say the square root of x to the sixth divided by the square root of 2y squared. So because there is no index, it is understood that it's a square root, that our index is 2. So we can rewrite this and say x to the sixth. We're taking out groups of 2. So that 6 divided by 2 will tell us that three groups are coming out. None are left over. 6 divided by 2 is 3 even. Divided by... I'm sorry, I rewrote the answer here. This is supposed to be 4, but we can break down 4 into 2 times 2. So that means we're taking out groups of 2. Those two 2's are coming out of the radical. Nothing's left over. Y to the 2 divided by 2 means one group's coming out. None are left over. So you have x cubed over 2y. Final answer. So this will give us that three we're looking for. This will give us that one we're looking for. Those are those two twos that are coming out of the radical. X cubed over two Y is our final answer. Lastly, we have the square root of X plus four. So X plus four is its own function. It's its own polynomial. It's our own little family. So there's no GCF, nothing that can come out of X and four. So because nothing can come out, that there's no two of a kind, there's no way I can break down x plus 4. So it cannot be simplified. So that's our final answer. Strict question. So that is it for Module 3, Homework 1.